Welcome to the Shreveport Connection with Tommy. This video is on Monday Night Raw results and Superstars partial spoilers for two matches on Thursday. And some brief WWE news. And here we go to start off the show. I'm still battling with my asthma. So bear with me if I cough a few times a, a short of breath. I'm trying to get, get you the news as much as I can. Most of WWE Raw talents had to evacuate Marriott Hotel in Greenville, South Carolina early this morning at 3 a.m. due to a fire in housekeeping. No injuries were reported so far, and that is a blessing in disguise for all of WWE for that. WWE Hall of Famer JR, Jim Ross, updated his blog section of JR's Barbecue, the following items. Are among the highlights to order JR's barbecue products, visit WWEshop.com. JR comments on WWE Developmental, productive day of day one of a two of two a days uh, here in Tampa at FCW facility. Approximately 23 prospects working out, doing a variety of drills. Lots of fundamentals being taught by FCW staff, led by head coach Bill DeMott. It will be interesting as to what everyone retains as it relates to what they learned today. Come another day of two a days on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, probably. They are getting great coaching from Dusty Rhodes, Jerry Briscoe, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, WWE Hall of Famers, mostly, and uh, Norman Smiley, Joey Mercury, and Steve Kern are also helping out with that endeavor. Uh, JR uh, had lots of items regarding WWE Developmental today in his full blog. As always, we are only running, I am only running the highlights, so check uh, on his website for all the details at sjrsbarbecue.com. Okay, well, here, here are some of the details. Uh, he, he had uh, uh, commented on ECW, uh, former ECW. WCW star Perry Saturn. Good to see Perry Saturn at FCW teaching today as well. Really proud of Perry for a variety of reasons, and it was good visiting with him today. Unquote. Saturn is getting around these days. He worked for a local indie group in Twin Cities on Saturday and was described as being in good spirits and motivated by someone who worked the show. It's nice to hear he's bouncing back after going through some dark times. JR then... Uh, commented and said they uh, on the tri uh, tryout camp at WWE Developmental, it looks like multiple prospects from the ongoing camp at FCW have viable opportunities to earn WWE Developmental contracts, but the next 72 hours will tell the story. So, it's only it's three days. Uh, Jerry Briscoe, as always, has done a superb job in, in bringing in some talent amateur wrestlers to the camp. It sounds like an eventual week of developmental with the tryout camp and Bill DeMott replacing Tom Pritchard as the head trainer. Hopefully, you'll hear, uh, we'll hear more by Ross's blog throughout the week. Injured WWE wrestler Ted DiBiase Jr. commented on his health status in an interview with the Baltimore Sun. I got that ankle in... Okay. Um, okay. I got that a ankle uh, surgery done. Shoulder was good. Just orthopedics. Uh, I was just just in and out. I was probably out four weeks or so, so I was ready to go. I'm back in the gym. The ankle is probably 85%, and I'm looking at maybe another month out. At least I think so. If I had to. I think I could probably go today, but I think WWE has given me some time to make sure it's healed, which has been a godsend because now I have more time to play dad. And speaking of why he's playing dad, he, he and his wife uh, welcomed their newborn baby into the world on, uh, I believe it was May 15th, so congratulations to them. And then he uh, spoke on, about becoming a new father. I remember sitting outside the hallway and they told me to come in. And my wife actually had, had high blood pressure and 
The baby came three weeks early, he recalled, so there was a little stress involved, and I heard him cry for the first time, and it was like, waterworks. I was a big, tough guy, and they brought him over, they cleaned him up, and here I am holding it, holding this kid. It really is the, uh, one of the greatest moments in my life. Definitely one of my, pro my proudest achievements so far. Because he was completely healthy, and my wife was completely healthy afterwards. Nothing went wrong with the birth, and there was a lot that could have gone wrong. And you, were, you can read the full interview at BaltimoreSun.com uh, backslash sports backslash pro wrestling backslash back anyways uh, ring post blog backslash ball Ted DiBiase discuss his impeding return to WWE Marine Franchise Fatherhood and more. Yada, 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 sorry. DBIC noted that his son Tate was born May 15th. Congratulations to him and his wife again. He also spoke about why he prefers to be a baby face. Not being cast in the Marine home front after appearing in the second installment of the series, the DBIC fan parties and more. And uh, uh, the fan parties are called DBIC Posse, if you don't remember. Triple H and Shawn Michaels are advertised for the 1,000th edition of WWE Raw. And the show takes place July 23rd in St. Louis, Missouri at the Scott Trade Center. Still a month away. And if I'm not mistaken, it's supposed to be three hours continuing from that night on. WWE is also advertising the dark main event for that evening. John Cena vs. Big Show and John Laurinaitis in a handicap match. Mark Henry updated his health on Twitter page over the weekend. I'm the healthiest I've ever been in five years. Henry wrote, you haters go to hell to, to the fans. I'm healing great. The Hall of Pain lives. Follow him at Twitter.com. The Mark Henry. Uh, this should be twitter.com backslash the Mark Henry. It's odd that WWE never bothered to address Henry's health on uh, on the company website. There's no word yet regarding the target date of his return and the remaining of his contract. Because uh, I believe uh, from his contract he may be retiring. Uh, WWE champion Sam Punk took part in a Q&A at the Wizard. Here, that's Q&A, it's question and answers for you, if you didn't know. And the Wizard World, at the Wizard World, Philadelphia event over the weekend, Punk noted that WWE has designed a new version of the WWE Championship belt. It should have been done a long time ago, Punk said, said regarding a change. There, quote, there is a new title, I've seen it, and I'll probably get, get, it, get in trouble for saying it. I don't know if it's any, any better looking than the new... Then the one I have right now. Okay, and he's also quoted, I have to look at it again. You know what? You know what? It's better than this. They literally made it. it, it and they literally made it. And it's 20 pounds heavier than the one I'm carrying now. So we're making a, another one. <coughs> it's hot there, and it's coming soon. You can view the first part of the Q&A uh, session at YouTube.com backslash user backslash Orzo Entertainment. Yeah, I believe it's a two-part interview. Thank you for uh, sending this in to, uh, from uh, Kyle Hyatt as he attended the Raw show in Greenville, South Carolina, and passed along the, the Superstars taping results. Jinder Mahal defeated Alex Riley by submission, probably the camel clutch. Uh, match number two, Swagger defeat. Wow, how how can they have how can Alex Riley do uh, do uh, two matches in one night? Hmm. Just have to see uh, how it hap how it happens. There was the first match that said Jay uh, May Hall defeated Alex uh, Alex Riley by submission, and then Jack Swagger defeated Alex Riley by pinfall. Two matches on. <laughs> on Superstars for this week. Go away, Rye. We know you, 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 uh, your championship material, but they just don't want to show it. And let you do the greatest. What have you. Uh, and now for the Raw. 
June 4th edition, 2012. The show opened up a recap of Big Show's destruction of various wrestlers in Raw and SmackDown last week. And that included footage of John Cena telling Larry Nines that he's, he's a loser, 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 while doing a lousy Jim Carrey impersonation. For some reason, they, they use music that would fit better on shows such as Sleeper Cell or Homeland on Showtime. Eh, strange, huh? Justin Roberts introduced Michael Cole, who entered the ring to booze as they started off the show. Cole Saul said John Cena is responsible for Big Show's carnage and has a lot to answer to. Cole introduced, introduced Cena, who stopped to talk into the camera for a moment. Before he headed to the ring, he got plenty of cheers for the Greenville crowd. Cole took Cena to, to uh, task over Big Show's claim for, from last week. Cena labeled John Laronitis a power hungry bully. Cena said to uh, he used to call Big Show a friend. Cena said he may have defend, uh, defended Big Show that night, but he was going to get Laronitis fi uh, fired so that there would be a new general manager and Big Show would get his job back. Cole said it wasn't written in stone that the new general manager would rehire Big Show. He said Cena is so wrapped up in his own ego that he forgot about that. Cole said the uh, show did what he did last week to, to defeat his family. He said he took the, the sure thing by signing with Laronitis. Cena said show is a man who wants a, a wallet the size of his waistline. Uh, he, got, he got fired up and said show turned his back on him and the fans. Cole questioned whether Cena was jealous of him because he won his match at WrestleMania and wasn't a punching bag for Brock Lesnar at Extreme Rules. Cole then said uh, he's been an advocate of Cena throughout his run in WWE as has supported him from day one. As the crowd was booing, and everybody knows his lying, Cena was sitting there laughing. He said he doesn't believe Cena is interested anymore and is overrated. Cole said he hopes show puts over everyone in, in their collective misery by taking care of Cena and no way out. Cole reminded Cena that he can't strike an announcer because it's strictly prohibited. Well, John Laronitis' music played, and he drove over. He drove. The scooter onto the stage. He introduces himself to booze, of course, the Raw GM and SmackDown GM crap. And he said he he wasn't going he was going to let Cena pick his opponent just as Show got to. He said Big Show is isn't at the show because he has selected days off and this was one of them. And then he informed Cena that he he has he had retired retired following his win at Over the Limit as, a, as an active wrestler. Cena pondered the possibilities. He said he's going to face an opponent he has been watching for years. He said the opponent's scouting reports reads that he is overrated, uninteresting, and Jim Ross says he's been being shoved down our throats every week. Cena named Michael Coleslaw as his opponent. And that was the, your, it's announced as your main event. <coughs> Cole said Cena can't do that and asked Laronitis to back him up. Laronitis said with, without a mic, he's sorry and drove away. Uh, commercial break. Back for a commercial, Jerry Lawler checked in on commentary and hyped CM Punk versus Kane with the stipulation that there must be a winner. A shot aired of Sheamus walking backstage. Lawler and Dolph Ziggler. Lawler said Dolph Ziggler was challenging Sheamus in a rematch for SmackDown. Because he claimed Jack Swagger cost him the match. It's not com it's not a conventional matchup, but I think it will keep viewers watching, uh, uh, or at least jumping back to Raw for the main event. <coughs> I'd, I'd love to think the WWE's reaction to the ratings is to have this man fire John Laronitis, and then have Cena put Cole back on the shelf. That it cre uh, creates a need for JR to return next week. Hey, I can dream that. Overall, a solid uh, solid first segment in terms of Cena's rebuttal. I wish he could show some intimidation in regarding Big Show. After all, the guy did wipe out several wrestlers last week. And it might sell some pay-per-views if Cena showed some indication. And it's not just business as usual. 
A graphic touted the, the DVD sales success of uh, WrestleMania 28. Backstage, Col- Coleslaw caught up to John Laurinaitis and begged him to call off his match against John Cena. <coughs> Big Johnny said, There's a rumor going around that everyone's jobs are being evaluated. He claimed he's all about people power. Cole said the, the people don't want to see Cena beat him up. Laurinaitis Laurinaitis said, they do. <coughs> Highlights here from SmackDown of Sheamus kicking David Otonga. Finally, the first match Sheamus versus Dolph Ziggler with Vicky Guerrero, Miss Piggy. In a non title match, Cole was back on the commentary for the match. Sheamus uh, jumped out on the offense. Dolph came back just before, before a break. And thanks to a distraction from Vicky after, after the break was over. Sheamus regained control briefly, but Ziggler dropped him on a jumping DDT for a two count. Dolph hit his famous off the second rope for another near fall at 8 minutes 5 seconds into the match. Sheamus came back with white noise at 8 minutes 40 seconds. The crowd popped as Sheamus uh, looked to them while setting up the bro kick, which he nailed for the, the clean pin. And that match took a total of 9 minutes 5 seconds. Sheamus headed up the ramp where he was uh, attacked by Alberto Del Rio and Ricardo Rodriguez. Del Rio kicked Sheamus off the, the low part of the stage and locked him in the cross arm breaker while he was uh, hanging over the edge. Del Rio scored good heat from the crowd after he released the hold. Commercial break. Well, that was an interesting, uh, entertaining match. I'm not sure how, how, the, how this benefits Ziggler. Sure, he hung uh, with Sheamus in a competitive match, but we've seen him have entertaining back and, back and forth matches with a lot of wrestlers over the years. The guy needs wins. It didn't seem like this was supposed to be a moment for for him anyways, given that the announcers didn't give him the, the special street treatment. And post-match was all about Sheamus and Del Rio to hype their pay-per-view match. Del Rio looked more vicious than usual, and it was a, an effective attack. Backstage, uh, Lauren I sent a crew member to fetch him a, co- uh, a coffee. David Otonga showed up and informed Lauren I at WWE website. Story states that Vince McMahon will return next week to give him a job evaluation. <clears throat> and then he uh, was uh, hyping uh, video uh, l- uh, later in the show about uh, commenting uh, the. the you know, the you, you, you're fired segments, well, the Vince McMahon always is. <clears throat> <clears throat> Which uh, would uh, also advertise the July 23rd, 1,000th 1, 1, episode. <clears throat> Back at ringside, Michael Cole and Lawler spoke about Vince McMahon returning next week and hyped Cena versus Cole for later in the show. Commercial break. I'm not sure why this falls under Vince McMahon's jurisdiction either. After all, he was removed from power by Triple H. Perhaps they will explain it next week. Match number two: Sin Cara versus Hunico with Camacho. They broke out the mood. They broke out the mood light, uh, light lighting for Sin Cara. Lawler talked about how fun it was to watch these guys, and Sin Cara was. He performed a series of crowd-pleasing moves and scored a clean pin. As the same same uh, ring gear that he wore on Smack uh, on SmackDown with a with his red attire, and not with, but still had blue lighting. Hmm. Now, did that make a lot of sense? Okay. So Carl defeated Pinnacle squash match two minutes and thirty seconds. <clears throat> now to hype the Raw debut of Ryback. A video showcasing some of Ryback's destruction of jobbers on SmackDown. They go to commercial. <clears throat> huh. Wow. Uh, c- comment. Must have been a fake in the car because this guy didn't have any, any major botches on live television. Yeah, I'm kidding. Uh, Say car looked good and the, gr- uh, the crowd was responsive to his unconventional offensive moves. But again, he did not have the, the trampoline bounce into the ring like he normally does either. So he just did his, uh, his jump from the floor through the bottom rope. Under the bottom rope, in other words. So, meanwhile, it was a good idea to include the footage of Ryback destroying people. It had to catch the eye of the viewers 
who haven't seen enough of them uh, to be bored by the squash matches on SmackDown. <clears throat> uh, video title the upcoming 1000th edition of Raw, John Cena said his favorite moment was when he was drafted to Raw on June the 6th, 2005. Footage aired of the segment with John Cena talking about how he knew it was uh, something special and a night he'll never forget. Match number three, Ryback versus two jobbers named Arthur Rosenberg and Stan Stansky. Yeah, what a name. Stan Stansky. Stan Stansky. Try to say that four times. Real fast. <clears throat> Before the match, and uh, they cut a uh, brief promo, promo in stereo together. They, uh, I thought there were three count. You know how, how the, the three, three count always did their little singing segment? Well, these guys did, the, did their promo together. <coughs> I should say. Uh, Ryback uh, finished the match with a double Samoan drop type move. And the match only took a minute and 45 seconds. Announcers hype CM Punk versus Kane after the break. The usual Ryback squash with some faint Goldberg taunts and more cheers for, uh, for his power moves. We're just happy they've stopped showing people backstage laugh at the jobbers. And add for SmackDown question at what Alberto Del Rio has in store for Sheamus. CM Punk made his entrance. Meaning it's clobbering time! Now just hype the triple uh, triple threat match for No Way Out. Cole begged Laronitis by telephone to let him out, out of his match with John Cena. Cole said Laronitis hung up on him. <coughs> <coughs> Daniel Bryan made his entrance and grabbed a mic. Bryan stood on the announcer's uh, desk and said it was time for question and answer time. He asked if AJ has gone completely delusional since he dumped her. And, of course, the crowd chants no, and he says, yes! He then asks if, if Kane will destroy CM Punk tonight, and he says, yes! Then, as the crowd says no, he then asks if uh, he will become the WWE Champion at Noel, and he says, yes, 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 yes! Borgasms! He answered yes to all the questions. Of course, he only talked to himself. I wonder if little, little Jimmy was beside him. Okay, Kane's entrance uh, interrupted uh, his repeated yes routine after the last one. Thank you for that. Uh, that was a, my best part of that segment, interrupting his borgasms. So we got Sam Punk versus Kane non-title. Must be a winner in the match. Cole reminded viewers that Punk won't have to be involved in the finish at No Way Out to lose the title. Brian rem remained at ringside to watch the match only. Cole said it's been 14 years since Kane won the WWE Championship. He said he last won the title in 1998. Kane grabbed Punk with both hands by the neck and tossed him to ringside at 4 minutes 30 seconds into the match. And that was a commercial break. One of the jobbers who, who lost to Ryback was Kirby Mack, who has worked for Ring of Honor in the past. He continues to, to work regularly on the indie scene. After the break, uh, uh, Punk made his comeback with a high knee in the corner, and he bulldog. He went for a cover, but Kane kicked out. Later, Punk uh, knocked Kane off the second rope after repeated shots. Punk went to the top and hit the top rope elbow drop for a good near fall. The that elbow drop actually looked like it actually missed him, and then he went back for the for the pinfall. Punk was knocked, not knocked to ringside as the ref pushed Kane away. Brian jumped up and kicked Punk a few times and then returned to his seat. Like nothing ever happened, but the referee actually did see him as he looked over. So that was a botch there. Uh, Punk ended up dropping Kane with a kick. AJ ran to ringside and then stood on the ring apron. Brian jumped up and to told her to get down. Punk dro drove in onto Brian and slammed his head into the barricade. Punk headed to the back. Headed back to the ring where he took a choke sign from Kane. Kane pinned him in 1340. 13 minutes 40 seconds in, in the non title match. After the match, AJ sat in the corner in the ring. Kane started to walk toward her rather than simply roll out of the ring. She stayed there. Dan O'Brien uh, struck Kane, who quickly fought him off. AJ still remained in the ring. She stood up and smiled at Kane, doing her little. And then left the ring without 
Uh, even uh, Kane then le left the ring without even har harming her. AJ walked over and intended to punk. Commercial break. Uh, so that was a really good action down the stretch with some strong near falls. They had punk on the verge of winning. I love the teeth of AJ potentially ending up with Kane too. Wow. How many men has she uh, been trying to get with? Hmm. Hate the idea of it actually happening, but I like the tease for the possibility that she could end up with anyone. Uh, God help us all if they try to claim that she's related to an Undertaker and Kane. <sighs> okay. And then hype the return of Mr. McMahon on next week's three hour Raw. Narrator t noted that McMahon will kick off the show. A graphic tally that the WWE Facebook page has more fans than the MLB Facebook page and all 30 teams combined. Backstage, Josh Matthews is interviewing AJ about what happened with Kane. She, she seductively played with uh, Josh with his tie, and, he, and that got weird. She pulled him in, cl in close and asked, Do you not like the aggressive women? I do. You know what? You might be my type. Uh, Matthews was flust flustered and walked away. As soon as she uh, she let go of his tie, uh, she did her little uh, thing. Lawler set up footage of John Cena selecting Cole as his opponent. Cole played with Laronitis uh, by telephone ca uh, cameras cha to change his mind. Then he went into excitedly hyping the John Cena vs. Big Show match and set up Big Show video package. Show said he's fat and fed up. They show footage of him clowning around and he said he's not an entertainer. He's a giant. I get they're trying to what they're trying to do by showing all the corny Big Show segments and I'm having to drive home the point that he's not an entertainer. Believe me though. We don't need a visual reminder of all the horrible shit that he's been done, he does over the years. So being serious and being cast as a true giant by destroying people is good enough. Well, next up was uh, our truth and Kofi Kingston making their way to the ring to a flat crowd reaction. <clears throat> so the match was up. Our truth and Kofi Kingston. Versus Tyler Rex and Kurt Hawkins in a non-title. The entrance of Rex and Hawkins was not shown. And the match was joined in progress as they were went to a commercial or a segment or whatever. Truth had his shoulder taped and uh, Kingston had his ribs taped to sell uh, Big Show's attack from last week. Truth so, uh, sold for his team and Kingston uh, took the uh, hot tag. Lawler told the rib, uh, sold the rib injury for Kingston, who was too busy doing his normal offense to sell anything. Kingston hit a top rope move and went for, a, for the cover. Rex uh, broke it up. Kingston hit the trouble in paradise on, on Hawkins and pinned him. <clears throat> and that match took about 3 minutes 50 seconds. A shot aired of John Cena walking backstage. Lawler gave Cole a hard time about his match. Time approaching when they went commercial. I guess Kingston forgot to sell as the ribs had been taped. I was actually hoping Hawkins and Rex could go over since Kingston and Truth had had the the had the belt belt an, uh, an excuse. But I guess the idea was to have the win to bounce back from last week. I would have sacrificed for that at least a week by trying to make something of Hawkins and Rex so that it could actually m mean a little something when the tag team uh, cha champs beat them. Then again, I think more about the tag, tag division than most WWE officials do. Okay, and if you don't... If you have a particular dream match, I do have another YouTube account that I do post dream matches uh, from the WWE 12 and the SmackDown vs. Raw 11 game. So you just give me, give me a tag team name and I will form them and put them on a match. I guess any of your choosing. Okay, uh, Triple H uh, looked back on his return from Raw from quad injury on January 7th and another 1,000th edition of hyped video segments. 
Next up was John Cena making his entrance and stopped on stage to talk to a camera again. You know, his little... He mocked Cole this time. John Laronitis drove his scooter into, onto the stage. He said he's been thinking about it, and it's clear that the fans want to see Cena versus Cole. He said it's also clear that Big Johnny always over-delivers. And you got crowd, crowd, boo, crowd booing. Larry Dyna says uh, Cena would face Cole in a no disqualification match, provided Cena is victorious in a, in a first match, and his opponent is none other than Tensai. Well, that was so predictable. And Sakamoto. Sakamoto came out. Tensai shows Sakamoto aside, doing his normal salt routine. Once Sakamoto regained his footing, he followed Tensai to the ring, and Cole, as Cole was celebrating the ring because he didn't have to wrestle, so he thinks. And your main event, John Cena versus Tensai with Sakamoto. Let's go, Cena. Cena sucks. Chance started off as Tensai worked over Cena to the start of the match. Cena came back and knocked Tensai to the ringside. Uh, Cena followed uh, by throwing Tensai back in the ring. Sakamoto caught Cena with a couple of quick shots. So leaving him lying at ringside, heading into the break, which was a commercial. After commercial, Cena cut off Tensai's offense and Flurry with a brief comeback, but Tensai shot him right back down and remained on offense. Seven minutes, 50 seconds in, Tensai rammed Cena into the ring steps at ringside. Cole, who had been rooting against Cena all the match for obvious reasons, got cocky and he talked smack while Cena was on the ground, about 10 foot away from, from the announcer's table. Cena made it back to the ring to break the ref's 10 count just in time. Later, Cena, Cena came back in with, uh, with his usual round-off offense and hit the attitude adjustment and scored the pin. That match took 9 minutes 35 seconds. After the match, a dejected Cole tried to escape, but Cena caught him in the crowd and threw him, in, in, threw him inside the ring. Cole had a mic and told Cena that they don't have to do this. Do it this way. He said they go way back and have been great fans. What? Lawler squealed. Uh, Cole said he could <clears throat> he could shake hands. Cena laughed while the crowd was booing. Cole took his coat off. You think this is funny? Cole asked Cena. You you all think this is funny? Cole removed his tie and started to unbutton his shirt. He said if Cena thought uh, that he, he embarrassed what, when... He was embarrassed when Larry and I just beat him. Just imagine how embarrassed he's going to be when he loses to him. Cole got cocky while talking about his he's unbeaten at WrestleMania. Well, the show goes past the 10 o'clock hour. Cena told, uh, said the fans are going to remember Cole as the guy who got his ass kicked. Cena stripped off Cole's shirt and pants, revealing nothing but boxers. He looked at Lawler and said, this one's for you. Uh, Cena stopped, uh, stopped uh, Cole, uh, Cole in his midsection. He, uh, he shushed the fans and slapped Cole hard across the chest, imitating Big Show's uh, little things. <coughs> he does a little shh. Cena took the mic and said Lawler wh whipped him at WrestleMania, and he knows it. Cena told Cole to apologize to Lawler. Cole then apologized to the King. Cena said Cole kicked kick JR. Off the table and owes him an apology. Cole said Ross is his mentor. He looks up to him. He said he's sorry repeatedly. Cena uh, said he loves JR's barbecue sauce and told Cole to tell the fans what he thinks of it. Cole said it's slobbering time, slobber knocking good. Well, Lawler pulled out a few bottles of JR, JR's uh, barbecue sauce, which was so predictable. Well, they were under the table, ready for it. Oh, <clears throat> Casino made a comment uh, he, about uh, JR's barbecue sauce. So he got a, uh, some free advertising on the barbecue sauce again, which you can buy at WWEshop.com. So well, Cena went to ringside and grabbed two bottles, which he poured onto a coal. Stop it, coal wine. Suddenly, a BSR star video, oh wait, a uh, video aired briefly. Oh, wait, uh, Cena went back to ringside and grabbed a fire extinguisher, which he sprayed a, uh, at the barbecue co covered coal. As uh, uh, Michael Cole's head was actually smoking because it was uh, supposedly hot uh, 
very hot sauce. As he was, uh, uh, he sprayed on the, on, uh, to cool him off some. Santa didn't hoist it up cold for an attitude assessment, but Tensai returned to hit the ring and hit him with a, his finisher. Cole then scrambled over to Cena, who kicked him out, who kicked out at the last moment. Cole threw a fit while telling Cena to look at him. Cole picked up the fire extinguisher and attempted to slam it, to slam Cena with it. However, Cena scooped him up and hit the attitude, uh, attitude adjustment for the, the win. And that match took 5 minutes, 30, 35 seconds. It wasn't the go-home show, but I can't, can not honestly say that there, there was nothing about the segment that left me interested in the pay-per-view, big shows next week, three-hour, raw show, etc. Oh, and Cena is clearly the dumbest baby face since uh, Sting and his four horsemen invite, accepting worse. He was distraught because he lost to Big Johnny. Yet he dicked around with Cole and nearly lo lost again when Tensai interfered. The Cena vs. Tensai match was ac actually solid, but it's a, to it's a total afterthought. Now that I'm left with the images of a mostly naked Cole dipped in barbecue sauce. <coughs> <coughs> uh, Punk vs. Kane was much better than expected. Perhaps viewers stuck around to see Cole get his arse handed, handed up to him again. And your dark match main event and your prior dark match. Thanks to Kyle Hyatt attending Monday's Raw with Greenville, South Carolina, sent the uh, following what happened after the Raw went off the air. Who was, uh, who John Laronitis had said that Big Show was not even there tonight. Well, he lied again. John Cena defeated Big Show, David Otunga, and John Laronitis in a handicap match. Santa Penn David Otunga for the win. There was a great atmosphere. And uh, there was another, there's another report, uh, uh, about that. And, uh, okay. Uh, here, here's a correction for superstars. It was, uh, Jinder Mayhall de uh, defeating Alex Riley. And it was Jack Swagger def uh, defeating Zack Ryder. After Monday's Raw Super Show went off the air, John Cena called out Big Show. John Lair Johnny Laronitis came out and announced a handicap match featuring Cena versus him, David Otunga, and Big Show. Big Show never tagged in during the match. Cena pinned Otunga and nailed the attitude adjustment on Laronitis in the show. So, so uh, Big Show just uh, just sat on the outside. Wow. And that ends my my uh, show for this week uh, for Raw. Uh, stay tuned for Tuesday night's taping for the spoilers for not only SmackDown, but you got NXT and you got the remaining SmackDown version of Superstars. Thank you and have a blessed day.